Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fisherman's Post Saltwater Podcast Series. This episode is titled Finding Leaderboard Surf Species on Hatteras Island. And I'm going to be featuring Ryan White of Hatteras Jack Tackle and Bait Shop there in Rodanthe on Hatteras Island. And we're going to be covering the species that are on the leaderboard of the Hatteras Island Surf Fishing Challenge. We're going to be talking about sea mullet, pompano, Spanish, bluefish, and we're going to finish with red drum, all popular surf species and all on the leaderboard of the Hatteras Island Surf Fishing Challenge. My name is Gary Hurley of Fisherman's Post. Fisherman's Post has been serving the saltwater fishing community of North Carolina since 2003. We've been bringing you fishing reports, fishing information, fishing schools, fishing tournaments, and here in our latest and greatest, the Saltwater Podcast Series, where we reach out to our captain and guide friends from up and down the North Carolina coast and ask them to share with us their thoughts, their insights on how to catch more fish more often. In this endeavor, I'm joined every week by my podcast partner, Billy Thorpe of Thorpe Creative. Billy, I hope you're ready, man. I hope you're I hope you're <laughs> locked and loaded. We have got Ryan White, and he is just eager to talk popular leaderboard surf species. Yeah, man. I, I got the um I got the sound pads ready. I imagine I'm gonna use this one or this one <laughs> quite a bit in this episode not 100 percent sure if i'll fire them off or not but it definitely is gonna be rowdy it's gonna be a rowdy show so buckle in everybody if you're listening or watching we appreciate you give us a thumbs up rate subscribe to all those fun things and uh yeah we really enjoy it and making it possible is our sponsors of the show marine warehouse center and srd20 uh, so real quick we'll talk about a couple of products that srd20 sent over to us um, so we got the waterless uh, wash and wax and then also the graphene uh, spray protection spray here so they sent this over for us to check out and you can go to their website srd20.com uh, for more information and to grab a couple bottles of it man so they're awesome company over there they're they're hooking us up with some cool stuff and getting ready to do some fun collaborations with them yeah man i tell you how i'm gonna i'm gonna use that graphene spray in the spring because i have an older hull i am lazy when it comes to waxing my boat i just don't want to do it and then the wax just doesn't even stick to my gel coat that long so i'm going to be using this spring i'm using is graphene spray easier to use quicker to use lasts longer and so for that, I can go, you know what, I'm going to try because I just don't want to wax. It doesn't stay long enough. And again, I just don't want to do that work. So I am eager to yeah. try graphene spray, begin the season in 2023. Well, Gary, if your boat is older and it's aging and it's not holding its wax, I know where you can buy a new boat over at oh. our friends at Marine Warehouse. Whoa, look at that segue. I just crushed it. High five. That All was right. good. That was good. So here's a quick video from them, and we'll be right back. At Marine Warehouse, we have everything from trailer, trailer parts, engines, engine parts, new boats, boat parts, a full store. We have a service department. We are your one-stop shop for marine equipment and hardware. We offer a wide variety of parts and accessories for all your marine needs. The best part about working at Marine Warehouse Center is to help customers really get the most out of their coastal lifestyle and share our love for the water. At Marine Warehouse, we're here to get you out on the water because of our love for the water. We like being out there and we want you out there with us. Boom, there they are, man. The people. The yeah, man, it might be time to start thinking about your new boat for 2023. I know whenever they bring boats out, I mean, he was standing in front of the sailfish a couple times and they've got a great product. But man, they've got the, they've, they brought out a couple of custom pairs that are certainly eye catching, sexy boats, very functional boats. But, uh, you know, everyone wants a new boat. Whether or not you can get a new boat or not is the question, but everyone wants one and it's fun to shop, it's fun to look. So, why don't you go over to Marine Warehouse and start the conversation? Who knows where it goes? Absolutely, man. And as you guys know, if you've been listening to the show for the last several weeks, we have been trying to figure out where in the world is Emmett, if he's not selling boats and catching fish and doing all those fun things and jumping out of airplanes and all that fun stuff. He's doing something else, Gary, and he does this. I'm going to give you a couple hints in the segment of Where in the World is Emmett, where I give you Where in the hints. world is Emmett? Yes, so the first I'm sorry, hint, I just like saying it. I want to say it every time. That's all right. And I think our guest maybe gave this away, so I'm maybe not going to have to try too hard. Uh, <laughs> so I was changing the picture over. But Emmett does this sport with some friends of his, and it includes sand. What sport is this, Gary? 
Um, beach volleyball. It is beach volleyball. That was easy. But what you didn't know is that Emmett is a twin. So there's two Emmets right there. <laughs> Emmett one and Emmett two. I had no idea. I had no idea that he was a twin. So they're getting double the action right there on the beach. Beach volleyball, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't know that him and his friends like, you know, <laughs> nicely colored and differently colored shirts. That's I didn't know that <laughs> yeah. about Emmett, too. I'm just as intrigued by that. Yeah, man, all those pastel colors. It looks like Easter on the beach right there. So. <laughs> Easter on, Easter volleyball on the beach. Good for Emmett. Yeah, I should have changed that with some eggs. Uh, anyway, so if you guys see Emmett out, be sure to take a picture and send it to us along with your fish photo, which I'm going to show you right now. So we got Jack Bungert from from Cary hooked this red drum on a piece of cut mullet while fishing the north end of Cape Lookout. Uh, Good-looking fish, big smile on that little guy's face, so you know that made his day for sure. Yeah, man. Love kids with fish. Love kids smiling with fish, man. I mean, as you know, you and I are parents, and as we get older, you know, just in general, man, it is it is as cliche but cool, man. Kids and fish and smiles, I'm all in. Yeah, man. Well, I'm excited for the big kid that we got on the podcast today who's going to teach us how to catch more fish. <laughs> Another good segue. <laughs> Another good one. I do. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. After 120 seconds. I wish episodes, I was pressing I'm buttons and you were talking to Ryan. That's what I wish. <laughs> no, dude. I'm going to have too much fun. I'm going to mute my mic and just keep my uh, my sound pads available for all the for the, all the rim shots here I'm going to have to push. So anyway, man, I'll pass it over to you, Gary. Oh, if you want to talk about our fishing uh, reports, because we do get some reports from that area as well, I can pass it over to you. Yeah, we're talking surf fishing tonight, but we do these inshore, nearshore reports. We release them every week. We release them on a Thursday um, in audio and video delivery off of the website, fishermanspost.com. So if you're wishing, you just wanted to stay more in touch with what's happening inshore, nearshore, up and down the entire North Carolina coast. I mean, we basically start at North Myrtle Beach and go all the way to Oregon Inlet and north of Oregon Inlet. Then it is no better way. Like we give you actionable information. We also just keep you in the know. Um, the guys regularly share small tips and tricks, and then every conversation ends with the weekender best play, their best suggestion for someone to put a fish in the boat that weekend. Um, enjoy it. I think you would enjoy it, and it's easy to sign up. It's even easy to try it out. And if it's not for you, then you unsubscribe. But why not give it a shot, man? Everyone could use more fish, more fish information in their life. Any advantage, right? Any advantage you can get. Boom, Gary. Crush it, man crush it it's uh it's it's great time awesome i get to i get to record and edit those every week so learn a ton of information um so yeah go check out that and yeah man i'm gonna be i'm gonna be sitting right here gary right taking notes getting ready for my takeaway so i'll let you take it all away. right <laughs> wish me luck <laughs> good luck <laughs> well it is my pleasure to welcome to the show longtime friend ryan white of hatteras jack hatteras chat a bait and tackle shop out in Rodanthe on Hatteras Island. Man, Ryan, thank you for joining us, man. I am, I can joke, but I am looking forward to talking surf fishing with you. Look forward to talking to you in any capacity, man. How you doing? Oh man, I'm doing awesome. Uh, just hanging out here a little after work. Been uh, enjoying a very good drum bite the past week or so. So it's uh the the drum fish has been off the chain down here, man. I can't I can't see anything else. If you've got a if you've got a pulse and you've got a chunk of fresh mullet on your hook, you're probably catching drum. Well, that's what I want to hear. But as tradition goes, man, I don't let you talk fishing until you get through the two questions, man. I got two questions for you. You stay you All ready? Right, I got question questions, one. Man. You ready? Question I'm one. Ready. Let's see. Question one. Why should we listen to anything you have to say about surf fishing on Hatteras Island? Why should we even check into this conversation? Probably shouldn't. No, no, you got to do better than that. Um, no. <laughs> so um, a little bit of background. I've been, um, uh, shoot, man. I'm third generation in uh, Hatteras Jack Tackle Shop. Um, uh, 2016, 2017, we won the uh, Hatteras um, uh, Hatteras Anglers Club Invitational. That hasn't been uh, back to back. That hasn't been done since uh, 1983. Um, you know, we've uh, 
We've been uh, sporting fishermen here on uh, on the Outer Banks since uh, 1988, and uh, you know I I like to uh, impart the knowledge that I've got over the past uh, 30 so years. Uh, and, you know, share it with everybody. Right on, man. I know you. I know you are. I have had you at the fishing schools, man. I see you at the boat shows, and you are an ambassador both of surf fishing and Hatteras. So you have easily moved on to question number two. I noticed. I noticed when you said. Uh huh. Up. Did you see that, Gary? Did you see that? I, was, I don't miss those details. I, I, I didn't. I didn't get this just for showing up. <laughs> no, you got it for winning. <laughs> you won. <laughs> That's but what here's I did. question number two. Question number two is a non-fishing related question. So I'm looking at Ryan okay. White. I'm looking at Blue Fish. I'm looking at Red Drum. All these are names with a color in the name. I've got a quiz for you. I want you to finish these names of famous people with a color in their name. Yep, you got to focus in, buddy. Uh, so the first famous <laughs> person with a color in her name would be Betty Blank. White, maybe. You got it. Question number two. Ah, thank God. His name would be Jack Blank. Not this Patrick. I'm going to say Black. <laughs> you got number two. You're rolling. Uh, right. Here is another thank female. God. Now first name Blank Johansson. Blank Johansson. I'm going to say Scarlet. And you are ding, 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 three for three. Look at you, man. I am impressed. Thank God, man. The, the last time I think you... I had a little trouble with these. I'm sure you did, man. I'm, I'm sure you have trouble <laughs> on a regular basis. Here we go. <laughs> Let's talk. So, again, I am, I am, this is no mystery here. I am using this podcast to promote the event that we work on together, the Hatteras Island Surf Fishing Challenge, the end of September, last weekend in September, focused out of Rodanthe. Hatteras Jack is the you know the main sponsor, the part of the part of bringing the tournament to the island. So I wanted to talk with you to talk about the species those anglers can target to help them out. We're going to be talking about numbers and size, and we're just going to go up and down the species on the leaderboard. So we're going to start with sea mullet. You know, a very popular category, you know, usually a small fish wins a big amount of money and highly contested. So let's start there, man. People can fish the whole island. They can fish from Rodanthe down to Hatteras Island. They can only fish surf side. They can't fish sound side. And I know the island changes a little bit, like shallower water above the point. I think it's deeper water below or maybe vice versa. Maybe I have that wrong. Where is that you most likely to catch a big sea mullet in late September on Hatteras Island. All right, so I'm gonna just drop a little bit of you know when you're when you're fishing Hatteras Island, if you've got the wind in your face, you're typically in the right place. So a lot of a lot of Hatteras uh, fishing has to do with wind. Um, you know if you're if you've got a if you've got an onshore wind, you're you're that's that's what you're looking for. You want the wind blowing in your face. Number one. Um, number two, as far as up and down the island, there are good spots all up and down to try and find sea mullet. Um, the through the 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 time that the fishermen's post tournaments going on, I mean sea mullet are all up and down the beaches. You can find sea mullet that time of year from you know, northern New Jersey all the way through Florida. So the big thing is finding the the structure that sea mullet hang out around. Um, you know, there's a, a, a one thing a lot of people forget about or don't pay attention to or don't know when they're fishing for sea mullet is a lot of them feed right on the beach. So the one thing you can do is search the beach that you're fishing for. Um, it's it's really kind of it's it seems insignificant sometimes, but there where the waves kind of come up on the beach, and you your waves wash up and they wash back out and they wash up and they wash back out. What you want to look for is a little muddy boil that happens at the bottom of the waves when they wash in. 
and then they suck back out. And there are some spots that uh, you'll see muddy boils. And what that is, is where the waves kind of converge and suck back out and they'll suck out organic matter, um, sand, small creatures, but those muddy boils kind of, uh, kind of uh, show you the spot where you need to fish. Um, the uh, the muddy boils are uh, their their organic material that gets washed in. So the little critters eat the eat the little organic matter, and then the bigger critters come in and eat the littler critters that are eating the organic matter, and then the bigger critters come in that eat the littler critters that are eating the organic matter. So you know it's just like your old circle of life kind of thing. You want to start at the bottom and work your way up. So. Um, right at your feet. If you're standing in the water, you're probably standing with fish this time of year. So uh, first thing is look for the muddy boils. Look for little spots in the way in the uh, in the beach where you have like sand piled up into a point that kind of tapers off into the water. The, the little points are great places for the uh, muddy boils to occur. And uh, fishing around those is your first step in making a uh, making a sea mullet catch. All right, man, I, I follow that and I like the logic already. And so, I guess we'll just go to what's your favorite sea mullet rig? What's your favorite thing to put on that sea mullet rig? So, sea mullet rigs are kind of uh, going to depend on the clarity of the water starting out. Um, you know, the clearer the water, the lighter the the lighter the fluorocarbon. And I'm a firm believer in fluorocarbon. You know, fluorocarbon refracts light the same speed as water does, so it it you know gives you a better presentation. It uh, there's no there's no connecting lines to your to your um, to your bait. Um, so the first thing is water clarity. The clearer the water, the lighter the leader you need to go with. Um, and if you get a little stained water, a little dirty water, you might want to consider some floats or some rattles. Like here at Hatteras Jack, we make our rattle rigs, which have floats and beads that actually rattle. So you have a float, you have a bead, and then you have your hook at the end. So the bead rattles back and forth between the float and the, the hook and creates three different levels of sound uh when you're when you're dealing with dirty water anything you can get to get the edge up this i mean this is tournament fishing so you pull out all the stops you know this isn't like recreational i want to sit on the beach and have a couple of beers and hang out with my girlfriend or hang out with my kids you know we're talking about tournament fishing we're talking about a money purse so you pull out all the stops um you know clear water Super light fluorocarbon, 15, 20 pound fluorocarbon, small hooks, small pieces of bait, right in the wash or laying on top of the outer bar. Outer bar looking for the same thing, muddy boils in the outer bar. Uh, so you have your shore break, the outer break, the muddy boils on the outer break, the muddy boils on the inshore break. Um, favorite sea mullet food? Man, I mean, this time of year, sand fleas, blood worms, shrimp. And um, another secret bait that is a uh, tournament fisherman's kind of secret, I guess you'd say, uh, big mullet, the big mullet, you know, not the, you know, people are like, I need the small mullet, the small mullet, small mullet. No, 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 not for sea mullet. Shrimp, sand fleas, blood worms, and big mullet. The big mullet, you're going to scale them. You're going to fillet them. Just like if you were going to eat a trout fillet or anything else or a bluefish fillet, you're going to scale them. You're going to fillet them. You're going to leave the skin on. Um, but for the sea mullet, you want to cut, you know, take that, take that big, thick mullet fillet from that big mullet. And you're going to see a couple of different layers. You're going to see the skin layer. So if you look at it from the side like this, you're going to see your skin layer. And then just below the skin layer, you're going to have a layer of really dark red meat, and then you're going to have your lighter meat. So what you want to do is you want to kind of take off that lighter meat and leave that dark red, oily, nasty meat on the bottom and cut it into small pieces. 
And I'm talking like, you know, inch pieces, maybe even smaller, you know, maybe the size of your thumb. And uh, use those, man. That is a sea mullet secret from the tournament fisherman way back. Uh, it is tremendous sea mullet bait. I mean, what, what doesn't eat a chunk of meat floating around in the surf? A little chunk of delectable meat. Yum. <laughs> All right. I, I only have a couple of follow-up questions. One would be this Pompano rig, it's a basically a standard two-hook rig. And are we putting enough weight on it to where it stays put? Or are you putting weight on it so it might move around a little bit? Okay. Well, I mean, yes and yes. Um, there's there are a thousand different kinds of sea mullet rigs. You can do a, a Carolina rig with like a two or three ounce egg sinker. And, uh, you know, like a 24 or 30 inch lead off of it with a small like size one or one oh circle hook with a chunk on it or a sand flea. And when you're searching for sand fleas, you know, the sand fleas like this, you know, the size of your thumb, they're great if you're targeting the biggest sea mullet. But. You know, I really like to be a little less exclusive and search for the the more pinky size sea mullet or the more pinky size uh, sand fleas. Um, but uh, anyway, let me digress to the you want to uh, you, two hook bottom rigs are great. Carolina rigs are great. Um, you could do uh, God, there's there's uh, so many different ones. But um, well, what about weight? The, uh, what about how we hold it still? Weight, as far as as far as it goes, um, and that's really personal preference. So you can take a, a teardrop sinker, and you can do a slow, super slow retrieve. Pitch it out through the water, uh, through the uh, between the outer break and the inner break, and do a slow retrieve back in to find where the fish are. Then once you find where the fish are, you can use a pyramid sinker. You can plop that out there and hold it in the spot where they are. Now, if you're shooting for the outer bar, a Sputnik sinker works really good. Um, a Sputnik sinker will hold it in place and will help set the hook with a circle hook, but you only get one shot at it. You know, you you miss your you miss your strike, and the the sinker is going to drop back and roll back into the surf or roll back into the shore. Um, so as far as weight goes, there's, there's, you know, there's the, the roll it back in technique real slow. There's the hold it in the place and give it a little roll. That's going to be your pyramid and then, or your tongue sinker. And then you have your direct spot. I want to hold this bait here. And that is going to be your Sputnik sinker, which has the grip wires on it. And they break back when you, uh, when you set the hook. And they also aid in uh, aid in setting the hook uh, if you're using circle hooks at long range. You know, with monofilament, right on, it's, it's hard to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say I was going to go, man. I'm I'm digging sea mullet, but I'm I just eyeballed my little timer thing. I got to move us on to the next species, man. Next on the list would be pompano. So give us some insights on pompano fishing for this event. Man, pompano and sea mullet are pretty much one and the same in the way you fish for them. Um, they're going to be on the uh, on top of the bar at the at your feet in the wash. You're going to use sand fleas. You're going to use shrimp. Um, those are going to be your two primaries for uh, for pompano, and you're going to fish them much the same way. So. Uh, um, one thing I want to mention when you're fishing for pompano and or sea mullet with sand fleas is when you hook the sand fleas, hook them through the back so the barb of the hook comes out the belly. Um, a lot of the times with both of those species, you're going to find that uh, they're going to hit it on the belly of the sand flea if you're using sand fleas. Uh, so hook through the back, out the belly one time. Uh, if, you're, if you've ever fished for pompano or sea mullet, and you've used sand fleas and you come in with an empty shell so you got this shell here and all the goodies are eaten out of the inside of it and your hook is poking out the back side of the shell you're missing your fish because you don't have your hook poking through 
this way. Man, I love that insight. So do I have to worry about keeping that sand flea alive? I just go right through the middle of the back and try to aim the barb out through the middle of the belly? Well, when, uh, when you're putting a hook through a small creature like a sand flea, chances are the life expectancy is going to be shortened dramatically. <laughs> Good advice. Just I, saying, I you know, I mean, for a lot of sand fleas, you know, live or fresh sand fleas are always preferable to uh, steamed or frozen sand fleas. And if you should happen to get a hold of the Holy Grail, where you have a soft shell sand flea, fish will show up out of other dimensions to eat them. So the soft shell sand fleas, if you can find those, uh, man, you can't do any better. And if you're looking, you know, the, 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 so the sand, let's give us a little sand flea progression. First, you have soft shell. Second, you have sand flea with the egg sac underneath. And third, you have just regular old sand flea. And then fourth, you go to frozen or steamed. Okay. Man, uh, I'm going to keep us moving. The next species on our leaderboard list is Spanish. And you guys do way better at catching Spanish from the beach than, you know, we're based in Wilmington, the southern part of the coast. Not that it doesn't happen down here, but you guys clearly have the advantage on Spanish from the beach. So first, why is that? And second, how do I catch one? C. Mucho pesca. Um, that's my Spanish. So anyway, um, the, the one thing that we have up here is deep water. So a lot of times where you guys are down there, you don't have, you have super shallow beaches. Um, up here we have a lot deeper water off the beaches, um, which helps out a lot. Um, we have had an unbelievable Spanish mackerel like late summer this year. So the Spanish mackerel have just been chewing. Um, you know, I mean, there's, there's some basic things about Spanish mackerel that, uh, you know, when you're fishing for Spanish mackerel, uh, and using, you know, I've, I've seen Spanish mackerel caught, on everything from bait bugs to to uh, deadly dicks to sting silvers. I mean, um, to top water. The the thing about Spanish mackerel is when you're throwing lures, uh, particularly from the beach, is fast. Um, a lot of times you'll see Spanish mackerel jump, and you'll catch bluefish. Uh, if you see, if you are seeing Spanish mackerel and catching bluefish, you are not cranking your lure fast enough. Uh, Spanish mackerel, most of the time, not to say they won't hit in the lower water column, but most of the time Spanish mackerel are a top water column feeder. Um, they have big eyes, um, just like the pompano and the sea mullet. The clearer the water, the lighter the leader you have to go with. And occasionally that can cause some uh, fish loss. But, um, you know, your tournament, so you're pulling out all the stops. You're using uh, light fluorocarbon, uh, liters, as long as you can get away with. Um, I highly recommend light braid, like 10-pound test line with 20-pound, uh, 15-pound fluorocarbon, if you can get away with it. Um, long cast, fast retrieve, if you can get the uh, lure to break the water, every so often you're going about fast enough um one thing about mackerel you know any kind you know whether you're fishing hatteras for spanish or you know if you're uh if you're catching if you're fishing for mackerel you want the spanish mackerel to believe that whatever it is it is chasing is totally fearing for its life if you drop the lure back to spanish a lot of the time you'll miss them uh, just keep your keep your lure moving fast. Um, keep it in the top water column. Clear water. Spanish don't hang out in dirty water. Um, again, a light a light wind in your face is um, 
preferable. Um, we can't fish the inlets. We can't fish the point. So uh, open beach where you have deep water coming all the way to the shore is going to be an easy way to get them. Uh, if you don't have deep water coming all the way to the shore and you have to reach out past the outer bar, uh, wading out and standing on the outer bar, or uh, a very long casting rod, such as a century, uh, go ahead and uh, think about that. And, uh, you know, long casts or uh, some wading are going to be a good, uh, good, uh, good thing to, good, good technique to use. Um, the other thing, Spanish uh, colors, the the glass minnow colored uh, sting silvers or ES lures or shore lures are really good. Um, chartreuse, anything with chartreuse, anything with pink, anything with gold, anything with silver, and we have some different uh, different options depending on the bait that they are uh, feeding on. You know. Um, they make some white ones with a little silver stripe down the side of it are perfect for small rain bait, which I mean, you know, the little teeny tiny fish you see like raining out of the water. Um, the, the white sting silver with the small silver with the, the small uh, silver strip on it works very well. Uh, they, uh, they hone in on the small silver strip and then the white's more of a silhouette. So. All right. I got a question about where for Spanish mackerel. So if I'm fishing an area of the beach that has an outer bar, if I can't cast beyond the outer bar, then I either Spanish. need, and I want to catch a Spanish, then I either need to wait out or I need to move to a different part of the beach. Yep. Yep. A lot of, you're not going to find most of the time, and I'm not going to say never, but most of the time you're not going to find the Spanish uh, inside the trough, if you will, or inside the slough. Um, your Spanish like to hang out on the outside of the slough or outside of the trough on the back side of the outer bar. Or, um, you know, you need to find some place where you got some deeper water and some bait moving into uh, moving into the shore. So was I, was I correct or incorrect in the beginning saying that in general it gets deeper, quicker, on the southern end of the island and the northern end of the island. What what typically so has the, the northern, deeper water on the island? The northern end of the island has the deeper water. Okay. Um, so I had you know, from ramp thirty, you know, ramp thirty eight north to uh, Oregon Inlet, we typically have deeper water. And then the the southern beaches from Cape Point uh, west have uh, more of a what we call a low impact beach which is shallower water, longer slope. Um, you know, so Cape Point North to uh, Oregon Inlet, I would say would be a great place to look or uh, Hatteras Inlet. Okay. Um, next on our leaderboard yeah. list would be bluefish. And that's a favorite of the surf anglers. You know, one of the favorites of the surf anglers from my vantage point, it's certainly one of the more competitive areas. It's one of the better paying categories on the leaderboard. So now let's shift from cast and retrieving real fast to catching a bluefish. Bluefish are indiscriminate feeders. If they're in there feeding, you can really do nothing wrong. You know, you just got to get something in front of them. Um, most tournaments on the Outer Banks are won by bluefish, you know, like points tournaments and things like that, the Anglers Club tournament, the, you know, all these tournaments – the the holy grail is getting a school of bluefish in front of you and wearing them out um i mean bluefish man they will hit pretty much anything um the lures if you get into a school of bluefish and they're out there throw lures all day long don't don't mess around with bait or anything else get something out in front of them that they're gonna that they're gonna climb all over um if there's, uh, I mean, you, you, you'll catch bluefish on the bottom, you'll catch them on the top. If you're bait fishing for bluefish, mullet. That is, uh, that is your bait fish, that is your mullet. That if mullet is the thing. And bait bugs, um, what we call Outer Banks bait bug. We make our own version here at Hatteras Jack um, that we have uh, tested many, many times and we have several different versions of them. 
But uh, bluefish love a bait bug or they love a float. They love a teaser. Um, and they love mullet. Strips of mullet. Um, so bluefish. Uh, if you're not going to throw lures, if you're not having any luck with lures on the bluefish, uh, big mullet again. I <clears throat> there are people that like to use finger mullet rigs for bluefish, where you use the whole finger mullet. It's okay. I am a fan of the scale and fillet and cut into strips. Um, bait bugs are a float that pretty much it's like pretty much like a floated drum rig with a long leader. Um, it's got a, a cork and some teeth, some tassel on the back of it, a strip of mullet behind there. That has probably won, a bait bug has probably won more tournaments on the Outer Banks than any two, loop, any two rigs combined. Um, so if you're, if you're targeting bluefish, if you want to get into the bluefish category, a bait bug is a big recommendation. Highly recommend the bait bug. Um, if you don't know what a bait bug is, you, you know, this is your first time hearing about it. Um, there's this thing called Google and it works excellent. Um, and if you go to hattersjack.com, you can probably find a few different versions on there. Um, but, uh, floats, uh, tassels, teasers, stinger hooks. Stinger hooks are very good for bluefish. Um, a lot of the bait bugs that are made uh, do come with a stinger hook on them. Uh, we also make what's called our secret weapon, which is two small floats, no tassels on a double drop bottom rig. Um, if you have any more questions, reach out to us, uh, hattersjack.com, or give us a call. Phone numbers on hattersjack.com. We'll be happy to go into deeper detail with you. Um, but. Uh, if the water's muddy, you might even want to just fish some cut mullet on the bottom. You got muddy water, fish mullet on the bottom. You got some clear water, fish mullet on a bait bug, on a secret weapon, or throw some spoons. Bluefish are indiscriminate. They're hungry. They're angry. They got a bad attitude. Um, they are a great point winner in points tournaments, and they are uh, uh, readily available. When you are, here's a couple of my follow-ups. When you're talking about a strip of sea mullet, like what size are we talking about? People love specifics. So we're, we're talking about a strip of jumping mullet, not a strip of sea mullet. Jumping mullet and I'm sea sorry, mullet are two different mullet. creatures. Yeah, my bad. yeah. So sea mullet, those are the things you catch on blood worms and sand fleas in the surf. <laughs> jumping mullet are the things that people confuse for striped bass in this bait cooler. Um, so what's a so strip the, look the jumping like? So what you're going to do is, again, you're going to scale and fillet your mullet, just like you were going to eat it. Um, you know, just scale it. You know, like if you're like, man, I love, love fish, fish skin on my fried fish. You want to leave that on because that's what holds it on the hook. Um, scale it, fillet it. And when you're talking about a strip, you're talking about a strip, maybe about the size of your index finger. So a half to three quarters of an inch wide um, and, uh, you know, two to three inches long. Uh, a lot of your bait bugs have the stinger hooks. So finger again. Finger, there we are. So you'll have your strip. You'll put the front hook in the front part of the bait and your stinger hook in the back part of the bait. Um, uh, pendants are really good. You know, start out about three quarters of an inch wide, work it back to a, uh, work it back to a point. Um, bluefish like to short bite. So again, I recommend stinger hooks. Okay, man. Uh, well, as popular as bluefish are, I think red drum from the surf are easily eclipse them. This tournament can pay you cash for catching a slot red drum and it can, it can give your ego a stroke if you catch a citation drum. So let's, we let's all focus like more on the slot red drum, catching a slot red drum. Man, I mean, really slot red drum and big red drum can be caught using the same techniques. Uh, I am a big fan, again, of mullet. 
occasionally tuna belly has been uh has been the uh the winning combination but this time of year we've got the mullet run going on and uh mullet did i say mullet if not i'm going to say mullet one more time uh we got the mullet run going on chunks of mullet are favorite for all of them again big mullet i prefer the big mullet to the finger mullet uh now not to say that the uh the finger mullet won't work um but you know somewhere between a 20 and uh 80 hook are pretty solid for for slot drum uh 80 hooks may be a little excessive two to four probably my favorite for slot red drum um again scale fillet cut into squares you know inch in square uh if you're using finger mullet you know cut uh cut each finger mullet into four to five pieces and one chunk just uh if you're going for the uh if you're going for the the, the finger mullet chunks one time right through the middle of the the body if you're doing uh squares you know cut out of the fillet through the meat, out the skin, turn around, pull it back through the skin, and bury the barb of the hook into the meat. Again, the uh, the the dark red meat is a favorite. And really, you're kind of looking for the same things you're looking for as uh, as with the sea mullet and the pompano. The the muddy boils on the outer bar, muddy boils on the uh, uh, up on the shore. Uh, another thing you want to look for is breaks in the bar. So if you're seeing uh, a line of breakers in front of you, you know, you got your shore break, you got your outside break, and then there's one spot in that outside break that doesn't seem to uh, be breaking as hard. Uh, that's going to indicate a cut in the bar and fishing along the edges of the cut in those bars. That's the drums. That's, that's his door. If you're going to drop a drum, drop a bait on the drums doorstep, it's going to be uh, in the in the cut in the outside bar, and that's big drum and small drum. So uh, I am a big fan of Google Earth or Bing or whatever your favorite uh, satellite photograph is. Do a little bit of research before you go out there. Find the spots. You know, you'll see the white water on the shore. You'll see the white water outside, and you'll be able to see those deep water cuts that run in through those bars, that is where you're going to find the drum. And, you know, normally you want to start at high tide, work your way to low tide, start at low tide, work your way to high tide. Uh, they like that water pushing through those cuts in the bar. Uh, that is, that is drum fishing 101. Man, how, uh, how light or how tight am I setting the drag? Am, am I, looking for the drag to set the hook am i looking for the fish to be able to pick it up and run what, what's your thought there so drag is going to be mike do you want is it in your hand if you're holding the rod then you don't need the drag set if you have the rod stuck in a sand spike hanging on the beach then you do want the drag set and you know you don't want a ton of pressure on it you don't want to have to struggle to pull the pull the line off of it you want it to come off kind of um you know, let's say three to four pounds of drag, maybe, which is pretty light. Okay. You know, you want to be able to grab it and just kind of pull the pull the line off, but you don't want the waves to pull the line off for you. Um, and as far as uh, how long you need to let the fish run with it or how long you need to let them have it is going to depend on how big the fish is and how big of a chunk of bait you're using. The smaller the chunk of bait, the easier it is to set the hook. Okay. Um, I guess I would ask the same question I did when I think back in sea mullet as far as, you know, your strategy for weight. Am I, am I looking for that bait to stay where I put it, or am I looking for that bait to move around with the water moving around? Um, it's going to kind of depend on your on the technique you're using. So there's a lot of guys that fish tournaments. Um, a real popular technique that's used in um, New Jersey and uh, also um, like Delaware is the drift technique. So they'll use a, a teardrop sinker or a bank sinker, 
and they'll cast out to the outer bar and they'll drift that sinker down the bar and when it falls into a hole it's going to stop and you'll find fish like that or if you know exactly where your hole in the bar is going to be you aim for it drop it there and peg it um same kind of thing uh you know sputnik sinkers they're going to help you uh set the hook without having the rod in your hand using a circle hook and then uh if you've got the rod in your hand um the uh the the pyramid tongue or bank sinker is going to be good for you know uh bank sinker is going to be more like i want it to drift pyramid sinker is going to be like i want it to drift a little bit and then the tongue sinker is going to be like well, I want it to drift a very little bit. And then Sputnik sinker is going to be like, I want it to be here. Okay. So I'm going to ask a broader question now. So the Hatteras Island Surf Fishing Challenge, 36 hours, fishing time starts midnight Friday and lasts until noon on Sunday. Some people try to fish all 36 hours. Some people aren't quite as aggressive. Everyone's going to be fishing at some point, though, during the night. Of the species on the leaderboard, which of them are you most likely to hook at night? Drum, bluefish, and sea mullet are going to be your uh, – drum's going to be your number one night fish. Uh, bluefish will hit at night. Sea mullet will hit at night. But um, if you're looking to score points on the leaderboard, I would target redfish, drum, puppy drum uh, during the night. Um, Pompano, they're going to be more following the tide. Uh, yeah. Spanish mackerel, they're going to be early morning and evening. Bluefish, they're, uh, they're kind of indiscriminate. If you're doing lures, do, morning and evening. And do all the species prefer like moving water as in tide, you know, as opposed to the Pretty dead much. high or dead low? I mean, are all those species yeah. going to be more active when the water's moving? Uh, uh, rule of thumb, yes. You know, am I going to say that uh, they're not going to? No, but if they're, uh, if you, if you have a, uh, if you have uh, water moving, you know, fish love structure and fish love moving water. Okay, so. I have but it's said a tournament, so podcast... don't stop fishing. Well, I have said that this podcast, in a way, is certainly self-promoting. And I I expected you to do some self-promoting. You've done a little bit, but I'm going to set you up to do some more. So the weekend of the tournament and beyond, but if I focus on the weekend of the tournament, what do you predict? I mean, maybe you don't know because it's what's available. What do you predict to be the bait offerings that Hatteras Jack has for the weekend of the Hatteras Island Surf Fishing Challenge, last weekend in September? Man, we're gonna have it all. Uh, my my plan is to have uh, fresh mullet stockpiled, both, well, finger mullet, corn cob mullet, and uh, big mullet, we're gonna have those in stock. Um, I've already been uh, coordinating with commercial fishermen for that one. Um, sand fleas, I'm gonna try and get some live sand fleas in. Uh, but if not, we've got artificials. We've also got sand flea rakes. I highly recommend you picking up a sand flea rake and uh, catching your own sand fleas. Um, fresh shrimp, we pretty, we've pretty we been doing really well on that. There's a lot of shrimp in the sound right now, so fresh shrimp hasn't been a problem. Um, and, you know, don't be afraid to go out and get yourself a live bait if you're, uh, if you're feeling frisky. Um, sometimes live bait is, you know, the, sometimes live bait's the thing, you know, every you know, fish don't naturally eat, uh, plastic. Um, and of course we're going to have a ton of artificial baits. We have probably one of the best artificial bait selections on the Outer Banks. You know, we carry GT ice creams for top water, you know, Spanish mackerel on top water. We carry Albi rockets. Um, Albi rockets work amazing for Spanish mackerel on top water. We have a very good selection of uh, sting silvers, ES lures, uh, shore lures, and uh, also gotcha plugs. Uh, gotcha plugs aren't my favorite in the surf, but they can be effective. All right. I got one other 
follow-up question about the bait, and that would be, you know, we have anglers of all levels that fish our events. Some are as gung-ho as any, and some of them just want to try out tournament fishing. Maybe they're new to surf fishing. As far as the sand flea rate goes, the guy who doesn't know much, little experience, buys the sand flea rake from you, what's your advice to him so that he can actually find some to scoop? Like, how do you coach him? Okay, so an easy thing is go to the pier. Normally, they're around Red Anthony and Avon Pier. There's good um, good uh, colonies of sand fleas. The The other thing you want to look for is get a pair, good pair of polarized glasses. Watch the Watch the tide. Hit it on the outgoing tide. Wait for it to come up high. Tide starts rolling out. You walk along the shoreline, and a lot of the time you can kind of see them galloping through the surf, running down, running, following the waves as they go out. The other thing you want to watch out for is little V's in the water. So if you look at the water and you see little V's as the waves are washing out, um, those are the sand fleas antenna. Um, another good, uh, good, sp good thing to look for. Uh, and uh, a little bit of advice is when you're using the sand flea rake, wait for the waves to wash in, put the sand flea rake down, let the waves wash out through the sand flea rake. If you put the sand flea rake in the water as the waves coming up at you, it will cause very painful shins. Okay. As the waves will smash the sand flea rake into your shins and they will bleed. Ryan White, I have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation about the leaderboard species of the Hatteras Island Surf Fishing Challenge. I'm more looking forward to getting out there and hanging out with you for that long weekend. Man, I don't believe I'm, I'm questioning myself right now for even doing this, but I'm going to leave it to you for the final word, the last word. We're at the end of your podcast. Final thoughts about the Hatteras Island Surf Fishing Challenge, please. If you're in doubt, do it. You should always fish a, a Fisherman's Post tournament. They're amazing. Gary puts on a great, great event. You know, you can't, you cannot predict the fishing, but you can predict a great event. And anything that the Fisherman's Post puts on is a great event. Um, it's always a good time. Come on out and see us. Uh, if nothing else, you will have an enjoyable experience. Uh, some great prizes, some great uh, camaraderie, and uh, maybe you can even buy something from Hatteras Jack while you're there. Yeah, man. Century rods, baits, artificials, rigs. Man, uh, again, I'm looking forward to it. That was a, I can't believe the quality of promo you just gave. I thought I was going to, I thought Billy was going to have to edit it out and you just hit a home run for me. I, now I feel bad that I doubted Oh you. man, I was thinking of saying something terrible, but uh, I, 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 I stopped myself. <laughs> Ryan White, have a good night. I look forward to seeing you soon, my friend. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you for having me on. And I look forward to seeing you and Billy in the near future uh actually in actually in the next week or so that is man it's sooner than you think all, all right. right dude take care all right Billy. what an episode gary what an i you know what i was disappointed i thought it was going to go a little further south than it did i didn't get to use my sound effects quite as much because you two goofballs i was like this is going to go south and i'm just going to my hard drive is going to crash. That's what I was expecting. But that was an amazing podcast episode. So I doubted well, you. I think I'm since sorry. we were promoting my event, I wasn't as willing to like give <laughs> to him longer burn. rope to go in bad directions. <laughs> I think if it had been a normal podcast, just about surf fishing, I would have I would have led him astray. But since this since I was using this podcast, oh. self admittedly, to self promote. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to keep him on task. I'm, I'm actually yeah. a little disappointed in both myself and him. I know. It was, yeah, it was good, though. It was, it was great information, and somebody's going to listen to this show, and then they're going to win the tournament, and then they're going to be like, dude, I listened to the show, I won the tournament, and then there you go. The whole value of everything we're doing is going to go up. So it's good. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I will not be there, though, Ryan. I know you said you'll see me. I'm going to let you like, guys figure that out. You're invited. So I, I know. I know I need to go up there and fish it and, and surprise everybody. Like 
Billy, the guy who doesn't really fish, but does fish, just comes up there and slays the tournament. You know, it'd be a, be a damn good If you showed here. up to fish the tournament, that would be way more surprising than Ryan White ending his podcast with a straight face promotion and not going to a place where we get at least a little uncomfortable. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm not coming. It's, I'm not doing it. I, <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> I'm too busy, man. I got to I gotta edit the show. I'm probably going to be editing the show last minute while the tournament's not messing. Uh, well, man, I got a couple of takeaways. Um, one, I like the little rhyme that he said way back in the beginning of this episode. It says, wind in your face, you're in the right place. So I couldn't remember. Yeah. Like Little Dr. Seuss action over there. Um, and then and then a couple more things. One, the muddy boils. I've heard Ryan say this before at a seminar. I listened to it. I took his advice, surf fishing, and he's 100% correct. Go look for those little muddy spots. There's fish there. So always, I want to mention that again. And then the, the soft shell sand fleas. He, he talked about those sand fleas so much, I thought I'd give him another shout out. The soft ones. Holy grail, man. Fish from other dimensions. The way, yeah, the way, the way he's talking about them, I'm like, wait, is he fishing with these or eating them? I'm not really sure. He's talking about them so good. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see his video. I see his mouth moving, but it's muted. So. <laughs> anyway, man, that was a great show. Going to be a great tournament. And once again, hopefully somebody listens to this and wins that tournament and gets us the feedback. And then want to shout out Marine Warehouse Center and SRD20 uh, for their support of the show. So go support them where you can. And I think that's it, Gary. I think that's all we got. It was a it was a great time, man. I always enjoy our time together, Billy. Yeah, you too, man. We'll talk to you soon. Fisherman's-